people, listen up. There's a new developer on the block. Yeah. I look around at all the crap you guys are making and all I see is garbage. Crap. 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 You think that's good? Since you guys clearly have no idea what fun is, I guess I'll just have to show you. Stand back, everyone. I'm getting on the computer right now and I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm talking about complex gameplay with an infinite skill ceiling, online competitive multiplayer, a full orchestra and jazz band playing an original score, 45 different characters, and that's just the beginning. Move over, Nintendo. Move over, Rockstar. You boys are going down. And how exactly did I plan to achieve this level of artistry? Simple. I'd just come up with all the ideas and then delegate everything to other people who are more talented who will work for me. Sounds good. What's my budget? Well, it's worth a try. I began to search for inspiration. I have found that creative insights usually strike me when I'm in an unfamiliar place or experiencing something new. I decided that the best place to begin was to venture into the massive ocean of the Steam library. There's more than 30,000 games in there, so surely there are gems waiting to spark greatness. The only issue is, Steam is hesitant to serve you games that are crappy. It usually only shows you large releases and doesn't provide any means of finding obscure games unless you search for them directly. Just when I wasn't sure what to do, I got lucky. It just so happened that a video by Giuseppe called, I played Steam games that nobody plays, had just come out and in it he lays out a way to do just that. All you have to do is go to steamcharts.com and change the number in the URL to 400 or greater and then you'll find all the games that no one is playing. We're in business. Uh, let's see what we got here. Fire Commander, Football Manager 2022, Children of Zodiacs, Hayden Lands, so S Jim 3D. All right, well, I see why Steam doesn't want you to see this. But after looking through crap for just a few minutes, I was able to find something that actually caught my attention. I stumbled on this game called Tennis Story. You would think it came out in the 90s, but it came out in 2018. Apparently it's based on a true story and it's actually pretty sad. And there's death involved, not to spoil it. The whole time, there's this tone of like a speaker that would come to your school to talk about not doing drugs or something. So it's a little preachy. Uh, it's got a few other problems too, like you can walk through the walls, you can move during cutscenes, the tech speed is way too slow, the car skids to a halt way too aggressively, and the gameplay is really wonky. The search normally would end here, but something about Tennis Story gripped me. I could feel that there was some heart put into it. Someone really cared about the people involved. I just wanted to see where it went. And then, I got exactly what I was looking for. Right at the end of the game, you're playing a tennis match against Vance, this tall guy, and the winner gets to join the varsity tennis team and the loser gets kicked off. And the guy you're playing against has a really rough backstory, so some of the characters are cheering for him on to win and telling you to lose, but then there are other characters who are doing what you'd expect who are cheering you on. Naturally, I put him in his place, but I thought the game concept was really interesting, a game that is both technically challenging and psychologically challenging to win. I thought that was kind of clever, so I wanted to make a whole game about that idea. What if the game constantly tried to beat you down and stop you from winning instead of encouraging you like it normally does? And the message could be something like, there's always a price to pay for winning or something like that. With a rough idea in mind, I began to search for more concrete gameplay details. I typed badminton into the Steam search bar and found a game called Pure Badminton. Let's take a look. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay, well, how about Badminton Warrior? It's just this black screen. Mm, what else we got? Lucinda Green's Equestrian Challenge? What does this have to do with badminton? Oh, it's based on the badminton horse trials. The five-day horse trial competition in South Gloucestershire, England? Of course. Who could forget? Next for the Nintendo search. Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympics 2020. Hmm. It's okay, but it looks kind of floaty and slow. How about Nintendo Switch Sports? It's not bad, but again it looks floaty. Man, these are all such a letdown compared to the real game. I guess I'm on my own here. And birds? I don't know, I just think the way their heads move is funny. Look how aggressive their necks are. Also, it makes a nice title. So we have our basic premise. Let's get to work. Right away, I ran into an issue. I couldn't figure out how to calculate the landing spot. I needed a way to draw an arc from the starting point to a very specific point on the ground so that way the player can actually aim their shots. 
Normally when you're doing physics calculations in a computer, you can use a parabola, but the problem was that this equation assumes that there's no air resistance, and badminton shuttles have a lot of air resistance. I don't know if you guys have taken physics in school, but you may have noticed that all the problems say ignore air resistance. And now for the first time ever, I had to do a problem with air resistance, and I wasn't prepared. I went immediately to Fiverr and found a physics tutor willing to help me for $20. And he had a pristine five-star rating, so my hope was high. We made a deal, and a few days later, he sent me the solution. The problem was, his solution was complete nonsense. He kept trying to explain to me over and over, but didn't get any clear. It was time to get revenge. Or just a refund. Or revenge. I messaged him, and then he argued with me. He was like, this is definitely right. And I realized that he wasn't going to give up. So I said, screw this, this guy's incompetent, I'm going to get a refund. I submitted it to Fiverr and it was approved. Then the guy started saying crazy things. He called me an idiot for not understanding him and all kinds of other names. So I blocked him and I thought finally it was over. But then I got a message on WhatsApp, sent directly to my personal phone number. I was not expecting this from you. I was so polite and nice with you. I did not scam you. I tried blocking his number, but then... But then I remembered that my friend Gio from university was majoring in physics. I sent him a message on GroupMe asking for help, and he agreed. We sat together on the computer for two hours just doing integrals and derivatives and all kinds of advanced math stuff. It was brutal, but eventually we got through it. I plugged all the stuff into Desmos and behold, I had a working calculation. Look at that, isn't that sick? I, to make sure that this was accurate, I took a video of me playing badminton with my friend and I traced out the flight path and compared it to the calculated one from the equation and it lined up perfectly. Physics can be pretty sick. I took the math equations and I converted them into code and I made this quick little demo of hitting around. And check that out. You can actually aim precisely. And I even added this little drop spot to really emphasize that it's all predetermined. Gio was flattered and glad to see that his work was correct. I decided to go with a side camera instead of the usual front camera to better fit the screen. Then I created a really simple cartoon penguin man as the main character. I animated him by recording my own swing and copying it frame by frame. I recorded sound effects using my own racket. Then I added the opening storybook, modeled out the gym, programmed a tutorial, and wrote music for the logo, which was pretty intense. I tried my best to model a pleasant athletic environment, but ended up creating a drab dungeon. So I, undeterred by the last incident, returned to Fiverr for help. And I found a guy and we made another deal. It would cost $100, which was a bit high, but it turned out to be worth it because after a few days, he sent me this. Looking pretty snazzy. But then, I noticed something in the folder he sent me. What's this? An asset pack? Five dollars? This guy charged me $100 to make a box with windows and then throw a five dollar asset pack in there? All right, well, at least the outdoor section is nice. Oh, oh no. A bit of an overspend, but it was an improvement nonetheless. I couldn't keep blowing money left and right, so I came up with a plan. Instead of paying artists for their work up front, I would give them a small piece of the revenue share. For example, instead of giving the gym designer $100, I could have given him, let's say, 1% of the total game revenue, and if the game made at least $10,000, he would get $100. As an added benefit, it would incentivize them to work harder, because if the game performed better, then they would benefit from its success. It hurts sometimes to be this business savvy. So instead of going to freelance.com or some professional website or doing things properly, I blasted out advertisements on game development, Discord, and Reddit pages looking for UI designers, animators, writers, the whole lot. I received a lot of responses, and I couldn't wait to see their portfolios. There's a big problem with this approach. Freelance professionals are aware of the fact that there's a very real chance they aren't getting paid in the case that the game doesn't perform well. So I didn't attract any of them in my ads. Instead, I attracted the fledglings, the innocents, and the naive. Their work was cute and all, but there was no way it was going to make it in the real world. I wanted business. Opting not to take advantage of naive 12-year-olds, I didn't hire anyone. So I decided to work on the game alone. After a while, I started to really notice all the things that I couldn't do. <laughs> I couldn't make 2D animated cutscenes without them being really ugly. I couldn't do the voice acting without sounding cringe. I couldn't design characters that were visually interesting, and I couldn't write a compelling story. I did succeed in making the music, but it fell pretty short of the sound of a live jazz band. When all you have to work with is this, 
I think anyone would be doomed to fail. I made a quick mess of the code, too. I had never worked on a project so large, and my choices of structure, or lack thereof, came back to bite me later on. I mean, look at this file, input.cs, 2,200 lines of nonsense. <laughs> it was so broken that I would change one thing and then something else would break, and then you'd fix that, and then something else breaks, and then you'd fix that, and there's this seemingly endless cascading chain of things breaking. After trying for several days, I tried to add on my multiplayer, but completely failed. To make up for it, I did add local multiplayer, but it's quite a long shot from the traditional online that we're all used to by this point. The ship was sinking quickly. The only thing that could redeem it at this point was the gameplay, but even that turned out to be problematic. I had my sister playtest the tutorial, and this happened. This game sucks. This is horrible. I could. She couldn't hit the targets on the tutorial. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, something terrible happened. Every so often while I'm working, I push my files to GitHub, which is a remote cloud that programmers use to back up code. Everything was working great until I got a notification saying, Dorobo. has forked your repository. Oh, I forgot to mark it private. Well, there goes the code. Oh, and also the music, sound effects, 3D models, and all the other files since they get backed up together. I quickly deleted the repository, but it was already too late. The code was out. So at this point, the project was an utter mess. The code, music, characters, story, and online gameplay were all busts, and I was making severe mistakes in development by struggling to find talent, getting scammed, and now leaking code. There was no way I was going to achieve the goal I set out to achieve. I felt like I failed, and I abandoned the project altogether. Hey Matt, did you ever finish making Birdminton? Nah, I didn't. I wasn't happy with how it came out. Really? I thought it was a lot of fun. Really? You did? Yeah. And you've already had local multiplayer, which is a big step. Just polish it up a little bit more. But I could do so much better. Sure, but that doesn't mean you have to give up on it. Personally, I really don't like a lot of my own work. I feel like there's a lot of what ifs and I could have done this and it should have been this. And a lot of things that I wanted it to be didn't go to plan. But when I put them out there for people to see, a lot of people actually seem to enjoy it for what it is, and even find things that I didn't think of. And I think right now your game is perfect for that. Yeah, you're right. I'll think about it. You know, Jake's right. The game probably won't be a phenomenon, but it'll still be fun for some people. Let's cut our losses and get this game finished. I added a few different minigames, a few more songs, some map variety, different color penguins, and I made it so that you actually have to complete certain things in the game to unlock everything through this checklist system. There's still a lot of things I'd like to add to the game, like more variation in the map sizes so some are longer or wider, different types of characters like speed and strength archetypes, but for now I think this is good enough just to get it out. With all that done, I uploaded it to Steam, paid the $100, and released it. The game is now available there and on itch for free. Give it a try. It won't be a life-changing masterpiece, but you may still have fun. For those of you true Birdminton fans, I created a Kickstarter page where you can support me in furthering the development of the game. If we reach the goal of $3,000, the game will finally get online multiplayer it's been begging for. There's also some other goals, and you can learn about them by following the link in the description.